So, I interview a lot of guys on the channel. Some of you guys say, who is he? And I call it the who is he syndrome. I'm going to end the who is he syndrome. If you watch Laugh at First Sight, you're gonna know boxing. These guys are Olympian, decorated amateurs, top tier trainers, and you guys say, who is he? Not anymore. I'm bringing these guys to you. You're gonna know the players, you're gonna know the sparring sessions, you're gonna know the legendary trainers, you're gonna know boxing. And you got a whole list of fighters in, in the gym that people don't even talk about no more because number one, uh, Butch Lewis used to call Michael, uh, uh, Leon Taylor to spar with um, Michael Spinks and Leon used to beat him down. Leon Taylor took Spinks to school. Leon Taylor was a yellow bus, took Spinks to school. Leon handled him, for me, Leon, Leon handled him easy, it, it, it wasn't any problem. Leon was real slick and defensive, so, and he would make you miss and make you pay, you know what I'm saying? And Leon, he couldn't touch, Spinks couldn't touch Leon. It looked like Leon was playing with his little, with his little brother or something, you know what I'm saying? That's how I looked in that ring. Leon was, I mean, he was that good. He was that good. Yeah, you know, slipping and moving and slipping and moving. And can punch. At the time, what made me a good fighter was my surroundings. This is sur the surroundings. The people in the gym. To be better than everybody else in the gym. That's what made me so good was I want to be better than everybody. And everybody want to be better than everybody. Everybody want to be better than everybody. everybody. So we fought against each other to be better than each other. So when we go out to fight, it was like a walk in the park. Ben Stott in the 80s was like, like, like demolished people. Ben Stott gym was like just running through people. It was just what made, everybody asked us what made us was so good was it was us, ourselves, competing against each other to be on the top. So I'm at the gym with the guys and they tell me this amazing story about a sparring session between Leon Taylor and Michael Spinks. I was impressed by his power. He was so slim. He had big legs, big hands. But his power was, he was small, he was small up top, but his power was unbelievable. To be that little, that skinny, you could hit like that. Yeah. His power was unbelievable. He could crack. That little dude could crack. He wasn't a little dude. He was like 6'2", but he was skinny. Did he ever hurt you when you were sparring him? Yeah, he hurt me a couple of times. Yeah, he hurt me a couple of times. And I hurt him a couple of times, too. <laughs> it's like one hand get the other. You're not just going to beat me up. I got to get my get back. I'm for best stop. I want my get back. You beat me up, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to beat you up. That's how me and Mike went at it. That's how we did. So I was in camp with him. I was, I was sparring with Tony Tugs. I was working with Tony Tubbs and he was fun with Michael Spinks. Mike, my man. I love Mike. Mike. Um, he showed me a lot of stuff, but we went at it. Me and Mike used to go at it. And I remember when one day we went running and Leon went one day with us running. I didn't like he ran every day. Leon just was one of those guys that was naturally nice, just raw, good talent, no good moves and can counter you and make you make mistakes and set traps. So one day, one day we went jogging and he twisted his ankle. We was up in Gross Singers. We was up in Gross Singers with Michael Spinks. And he twisted his ankle. So we walked back, we, you know, we walked back to the, uh, to the hotel. So we came down to train that day. So I said, Nelson, I felt my ankle up and swollen. He said, no, you boxing today. I said, but my ankle's swollen, look. We paying you, you boxing. Butch Lewis was like, we don't care about you hurt your ankle, you gonna have to work today. You gotta box with Mike today. I said to myself, like, 
they see his ankle hurt, why would they do that? Why would they try to put that kind of pressure on him to make him spar like that? You know what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying to myself. Like, why are they putting that pressure on him? So he like, but I twist my ankle. And they was like, yo, we bring you here to do a job. Are you going to box or are you, are you going home? What are you going to do? Leon got dressed. I got real mad, so I look at Blip and um, Richard, Bamboo. I said, you know what? I'm going to fuck this nigga up. Watch this shit. Yo, I never seen nobody hop on their front foot, on their front foot, moving. He destroyed Mike. After the second round, they were like, Leon, come out, come out, come out, come out. Because, you know, they had people sitting around, and he was embarrassing him, yo. On one leg, yo. That was shit was unfucking real. I'm sitting here like, this dude is the light heavyweight champion of the world. And he just destroyed him on one leg with a left hand. I beat the shit out of him with a fucked up ankle. I was like, wow. That was remarkable, man. I've never seen it. And then after the second round, they were like, all right, all right, come on, cat, come on, come on, come on. And, um, and he respected me, too. After he found out he couldn't do what he could do with me, he had to respect me. When he was coming back home and when we got the word back, what he was doing to, to, to Spinks, it's the thing where uh, Butch wasn't going to let his fighter get beat up. So at, at, when, we get, when we signed, when I actually get signed with Butch Lewis, they really didn't let me and Mike box no more because we're going to kill each other. It was like a war. No matter how great your skills are, you have to stay focused. You have to stay out of those streets. You know, Leon, Leon liked the streets, but Leon, you know, he can, he can box. Leon Taylor could have been one of the greatest of all time, but caught up in the streets a lot. And to this day, I'm a big fan of his when I see him like, yo, shit, that's Leon Taylor. And I learned a lot from him, you know what I'm saying? But Leon Taylor got caught up in the streets a whole lot. Wasted talent. That's what you could say. It was wasted talent. Something the street got a hold of and he and he could never turn it loose. He would come in the gym. He wouldn't be in the gym for maybe a year and a half. And he would come in the gym and spar with the top fighter in the gym. A guy that's getting ready to fight top fighter in the gym. And make him look bad. And you'd be like, yo, what the fuck? I remember one time, Leon Taylor sparred a guy. There's no bullshit. That bad side boxing gym. He had on no headgear. Heavyweight. He had, I ain't gonna say his name, but he had on no headgear, he had on no mouthpiece, and he had a toothpick in his mouth. No headgear, no mouthpiece. He had a toothpick in his mouth, and Leon took that motherfucker to school. The cat tailor. It don't get no better. I'm telling you. Leon was poetry in motion when you saw Leon do it. And it was another one of those things where you had to be there, man. You had to be there. I wish I could relive those days. Whatever happened in the streets, when I be out in the streets, is in the streets. But when we came in that gym, it was like, it's like, like a cloud lifting. We just like free. I like, I could do what I want to do. I'm, 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 I'm at peace. Let me do my thing. A lot of people don't know about Leon Taylor, but they should. Thanks for joining us, guys. Make sure you subscribe. I'll have more videos soon about legendary boxing trainers, legendary sparring sessions, legendary boxers.